Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be a direct continuation of the fly with me that I'm doing. I'm taking the XR5 from Cape Canaveral, that's KSC in Florida, and I'm circumnavigating the globe. In the last video, we got the XR5 up off the runway, did our scram ascent, used about, it's probably about 70% of the scram fuel, 75% maybe, and then had to dump the rest, got into orbit, uh, completed the completed the uh you know most of the trip around the globe but now we're getting ready to set up for landing and landing it just itself usually takes you know 15 20 minutes if not even a little bit more than that so i went ahead and decided to break this video up into two parts but uh if you didn't catch the last video and you want to kind of know what's going on you might want to go back and watch that one but if you're only interested in the landing that's cool too then you can just tune in here so let's go ahead and switch camera views and unpause and get right back into it. So currently I'm watching, I'm, cur I'm currently watching the distance off base. You can see that's coming down. As I said in the last video, when you take off and get into orbit, or really when you take off and you're heading to any base, you don't necessarily, let's say it this way, if you're gonna, if you're gonna circumnavigate the globe, you don't necessarily wanna go to 90 degrees. It isn't the ideal heading, uh, but that's what I did because I don't know off the top of my head how to calculate the best heading for when you just want to go from one base to another there again there is a way to know uh, but like for example if you're going to go from los angeles to new york and you're going to fly with an average velocity of say 2000 meters per second there's a way to calculate what heading you should have when you take off from from california so that you arrive in new york um, with an off base distance that's very close to zero there's a way to figure all that out but you can see our our off base distance is almost down here so it's no problem and once that reaches uh just a little bit lower we'll come out of this this angle that we currently have where we're kind of taking advantage of the atmosphere here around 72 kilometers just to help steer ourselves into alignment you know sort of that atmospheric surfing type of thing and you can see that's coming down rapidly. It's more than one kilometer per second. So just another 10 seconds or so here and we'll be all set. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out that elevator trim now. And we can start rolling the XR2 over. Looks like I started that a little bit late. No, it's about on time. XR5 rather. And now we're just, I'm kind of coasting along here don't really want to gain altitude so i'm actually going to bank back over and if i if i need to which i will i'm going to bank back and forth for a while i'm just trying to get a little bit closer to the base we're still 10,000 kilometers out so we don't want to uh, we don't want to start our attitude hold yet because that'll just take a long time so i'm going to like I said, i'm going to go ahead and bank over to the side here a little bit just to keep my meters per second from taking us back you know up to a higher higher altitude and that is affecting my off-base distance that's okay I'll roll back over the other way here once this gets up a little bit higher and again just watching that distance off base coming down still got a ways to go before we're gonna be ready to engage so it looks like I brought the looks like I brought the uh, periapsis down a little bit too much so instead of bringing it all the way down to 30 the 40 or even 50 probably would have been okay I just didn't want to run the risk of getting too close to the base and not having enough time to take care of that 300 kilometer off base you know distance or off base alignment um, I think I will go ahead and turn Gosh. off surface controls and turn off the APU though for now because it's kind of running unnecessarily we can just do everything with rotation at this point should be coming up to the day night terminator pretty soon yeah, not too far away. So, so we're at uh, 50 kilometers uh, off, you know, off base in this direction. So let's go ahead and roll over, kind of the other way a little bit, and maybe even do a little bit of time warp here to speed up, speed things up, so we can get a little closer to the base. So I'm just going to put in a touch of right bank, and now time warp. Mock 25. See the off base distance coming down. Distance to the base overall is 9,000. Mock 25. Technically, it was over 9,000. 
and keeping an eye on the meters per second because again we don't, I don't want to climb up too much but doesn't look like that's going to be a problem now we're coming into sunrise And there's the sun coming up over the horizon. Okay, so now we're uh, getting off in terms of our alignment with the base. It's going the other direction. So let's go ahead and come back to the center position at least so that we don't just continue getting farther out. Okay, now I uh, don't really need Orbit MFD anymore, so I'm going to bring up one of the uh, tools that I like, which is Glide Slope MFD. I'm not a big, big fan. Um, well, I, I like the MFD a lot. Don't get me wrong; it's a great MFD. I use it all the time. I'm not a big fan of the of the design. It's kind of messy, in my opinion. But the one thing about this MFD that I find invaluable is this screen right here, the H Sit, which stands, I believe, for horizontal situation. What this screen does, and I've, I've actually got a whole video i think it's in my absolute beginner guide i've got a whole video on how to use this mfd but what i really like about this mfd with regards to uh, landing and arriving at a base is uh, this screen here this line shows me exactly where i need to go and currently if you look closely you can see there's like a little control symbol there it's like a little carrot in this 1.9 degrees this is telling me that i'm currently 1.9 degrees off of alignment and in order to get into alignment I need to correct by banking a little bit more to the right so if that carrot is on the right you need to bank to the right if you see that little symbol on the left then you need to bank to the left it's that simple Mark so I'm banking in the wrong direction so let me bank this way now you will note I believe that uh, the distance off base according to base sync will will say something else and that's fine but once you get in closer to the base, this is a better MFD to have up. Because this one, I, I guess it doesn't take into account. There's just something that it's not taking into account, but this one does. So we're done with base sync. We don't need it anymore. Bring up surface MFD on this side. And we can also start looking at arrow break. That's always good to have, obviously. So let's bring that up. And target KSC. And we're going to page over to the screen, then <clears throat> change the projection to here. And we are 6,000 kilometers out. I'd like to get in a little bit closer before I worry about engaging, engaging the attitude hold, because otherwise it just takes longer to make all that happen. But yeah, this, this MFD is great. There's a couple of things that it's really good for, but the couple of things about it that I don't like, um, <clears throat> this screen I think would be much more, I think it would be more useful if, I, I, it's just a design thing. I don't know, there's something about MFDs that try to do too much that just, they just seem cluttered and messy to me. I kind of like, I, I come from a Unix environment where instead of having like one thing that does everything you have 10,000 things and each one of those 10,000 things does one thing really well you know like I guess an example might be like Microsoft Word okay it, it's like this word processing program and it's just it's too much it it tries to do way too much and it just makes the whole program difficult and confusing and most people only end up using it to to like type letters so 99.99% of the functionality built into that program goes unused by a lot of people. And even the stuff that even power users of Word that use a lot of extensive features don't even touch the surface. They don't even come close to using all the stuff that it can do. Okay, so we're only one degree off. You can see that there. And that's still that little carrot symbol still on the right side. So we're, we still need to have a bit of right bank in there to get aligned. And actually, let me make sure I'm targeting the right base. Yes, I am. So you press uh, CFG, and then you can either use PB, which Mark is previous 24. base, or NB, which is next base, and then choose whichever runway you want with the same thing, previous runway or next runway. I don't really care which runway I end up on. Uh, one thing that was added not long ago to this MFD 
was this here this vb gives you a visual something I'm not sure what the b stands for but a, a visualization of the base i guess and you can actually see sort of the alignment of the uh, of the runway which is very cool and looks like we're getting a little farther out actually so let's put in a little more bank And now you can see that coming down a little more. If I want to speed that up a little bit, I can APU actually I could say I could put in a little bit of um, up elevator trim, but currently I've got the APU off, so that's not going to work. So I'm going to continue gliding here at this attitude until until this MFD indicates that I'm good to go. 4,000, almost 5,000 kilometers out from the base. So we still want to hold on to uh, quite a bit of this velocity. We don't want to engage the attitude hold and start slowing down now because we'll just it'll just take extra extra long to get over there let's start rolling out <clears throat> the lower we get into the atmosphere the more the more correction we get with our bank so this comes down faster and faster the lower we get and we're almost perfectly lined up so i'm going to go ahead and go back to that center position now so we can hold on to this velocity and you can also see an arrow break MFD once we're more or less center that the, this line pretty well cuts through the center within, you know, within just the slightest amount of bank one way or the other. So we're going to glide a little bit farther out and then we will engage the attitude holds so I think we can actually get away with just a touch of time warp at the moment just be a little careful with it that way we can get a little bit farther along in our glide I want to watch this though I don't want to climb all right that's fine I just want to you really want to watch you know because now we're getting really close to the time where we need to engage so we want to make sure we're on our way down or we're on our way down can get any even, even a little bit closer, I think, before we worry about engaging. Okay, that's that's getting pretty close, and actually, I wasn't paying attention. I'm getting a bit off here, so all right, let's go ahead and press L to engage. And as we do that, let's make sure we don't climb. So, yeah, watch your meters per second to make sure you're on your way down. Uh, watch your vertical speeds. What I what I meant to say there. And then watch an arrow break MFD to make sure you're actually going to come down at the base. So we're going to increase our Mark 23. bank a little bit, or rather our AOA a little bit. It's a bit too much, though. So now I'm going to use Alt-8, and that's 8 on the numeric keypad. Alt-8 to take out some of the, some of the AOA. And put in several degrees of left bank. And what we're looking for here is we want this green line, which indicates where we're going to end up. We want that to be roughly in the neighborhood of that yellow box. That yellow box indicates uh, our target, and we don't necessarily want to hit the dead center of the target. Mark 22. Because when we arrive at the base, we want to have enough room for you know if you, again i always say this if you're if you're flying straight toward the runway and the runway's like that and you're coming into the runway like that then you're not going to be able to land on the runway so you want to arrive in front of the runway somehow take out a little bit more of the uh, aoa because we're shows we're coming up too short now one thing too since we're in the xr5 and we're not in the xr2 we don't have nearly the kind of gliding that we the gliding capability that we do in the XR2 so we don't want to arrive too far away from the base so I'm putting in a lot of bank angle here so you can see it's kind of bending my path here into KSC that's what I want Mark 20. we're only 1,000 kilometers out let's take a look at the external
Mach 19. Getting into the part of the atmosphere now where we're seeing some re-entry flames. Taking out a little bit more 18. attitude. I really goofed up on the uh, on the alignment. Doing a little bit of work here with the attitude Mach holds 17. to again to make sure that we're gonna kind of wind ourselves up and around toward the base. Looks like we're drifting. <laughs> like if you ever see those cars that. You know, they kind of drift around Mach corners. 16. Looks more like our XR5 is a drifter. Let's check uh, temperatures and such. Mach 15. Pretty hot. That's definitely as hot as I would want to get. Mach 14. I didn't actually anticipate there would be any temperature issue at all, but because I have so much bank angle in there, you know, we're riding pretty heavy on that one side. Alright, let's get the uh, keyboard out of the way and slide the controller back over and get ready to try to land. Now, I, I have a, a history of not having the greatest landings with the XR5 because it's it's pretty different from the XR2 it just it drops you know it, it drops like a Mach tank 10. and and it slows down actually when you go into a dive the XR5 still manages to slow down Mach 9. okay so again over here with the uh, glide slope 2 it's very helpful because it shows me you know how I need to arrive and you can see this yellow line is basically what it's telling me I need to do and it's that's very close to what my green line is showing so what I'm actually doing compared to what I need to be doing is very close but I will bring up uh, that's not what I want at all not even close Mach 7. The, the hack the HAC I hate having it on that's good enough okay so once we get down to, Mach six. and this is currently backwards because I have the wrong one, wrong runway selected. I don't even have a runway selected. Mach five. Something like that should be better. So once we drop down to about uh, getting pretty close to that point, we're going to turn off all the stuff. Matter of fact, I'm, uh, I I would like to do it now, but Mach four. our load's gonna go through the roof when we do this. But I don't, I can't display it right now. My cam's in the way. Guess I can do this though. You bring up load MFD real quick and put the display there. You can see we're currently pulling two Gs. All right, that's oh. off, and you'll notice the G will go up way up for a moment. Get rid of the elevator trim. And now the uh, Florida is kind of somewhat behind me. Yeah, I don't. I see. That's really hard not to pull a lot of G's when you're, you know, just the slightest amount of input on the joystick Mach when you're when you're going at these kinds of speeds. But there we're okay. Let me bring glide slope. Actually, I don't need glide slope at this point. Information. APU pure 70%. Coming out of our turn. And the targeting on the base was actually really good. We ended up we ended up uh, either, I don't know if you want to call it behind the runway or in front of the runway, but either way, you know, we don't have any great amount of uh, cross flying to do. Although actually it would have been better if I'd been even farther back. So rarely do I have to open the air brake with the XR5, but
but I definitely feel like I need to slow down. I'm currently flying Sounds intentionally a bit right of the runway because I want to get more in front of it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring the air brake back in because this thing slows down really fast. You definitely don't want to ride the air brake too much in the XR5. You'll find, I find, that I'm that when I do that, I'm often mistaken in just how much time I need to have on the air brake. Because you can see I'm in a 30 degree down pitch and I'm still losing speed. 5,000. But we are quite close to the runway, so I'm going to put a little bit more time on the air brake. Not much. 4,000. Okay, we are coming in. 3,000. A little more time on the air brake. 2,000. Nicely lined up with the center of the runway, I feel. Okay, that's it for the air brake. I don't think we need any more. You are cleared to land. And we'll put the uh, landing gear down here in a moment. Make sure I got my finger on the right button. I have a bad habit of hitting, turning off 1, the APU. 900. 800, 700, 600, 500, gear, down. gear coming down, watch the vertical speed so we don't slam the runway, gear is up, gear down and locked, 175, 50, 30, 15, air brake, wheels down, eh, it's a little harder on the landing than I'd like, but better than several other landings. I'm, I'm not even riding the brakes at the moment. We can just, it'll slow down. Let me go ahead and put out the, or go ahead and use the brakes just to slow down faster, but we don't need them. 100 knots. Have wheel stop here in a moment. Wheel stop. Okay, there's wheel stop at one hour, 46 minutes and some change. That's the usual time, the mission time for going around the earth one time and landing. Again, that's not, you know, any attempt at speed or anything because you're really, when you get up to orbital velocity and you circle the globe, you're really at the mercy of just the laws of physics. There's not a lot you can do to speed up your trip around the world when you're when you're orbiting in fact if you sped up you would actually de you would actually take longer to go around the world because you would extend your apoapsis out into space so far that it would take longer to come around so the only way you can really speed up your trip around the world is to do like we do in the speed runs from going from ksc to wide awake you know when you get up to 70 kilometers or so go inverted and then just fly in the atmosphere you could do that i think and, I, and again i've started to do it i started to record some videos of that two or three different times where i was going to circle the whole globe doing that speed run method just to see if i could get around the earth like in an hour or something but it's it's a really it's a boring flight because you have to you can't do any you can't do any uh, time warp in in that constant adjustment on the uh on the stick to keep your keep yourself in that narrow window in the atmosphere it just gets really tedious after after the first you know 10 or 12 minutes so that trip between ksc and wide awake is like perfect because you get up to a really fast speed and then you only have to control manually with the joystick for like two or three minutes and then you're ready to land it's it's a really nice flight okay so that's going to be it for this video um unfortunately i had to break it up into two parts but if i hadn't done that then this one video would have been close to an hour and I'm, again, I'm trying to keep everything down under, you know, 30 minutes or even closer to 25 minutes these days. So that's it. And hope you enjoyed everything. If you liked the video, please hit the like button down below. And if you didn't like it, that's fine. Hit the uh, don't like button. Check for links in the description below. And I will see you in the next flight.